The question is how do scientists view these deeper questions that we're kind of trying to get into now? And there's a famous quote by Feynman, uh, Richard Feynman, who said, I don't understand quantum mechanics, and I don't think anybody understands quantum mechanics. And he's talking to his uh, students at, Emma, at Caltech, and if you can possibly help it, don't try. Because if you do, you'll go down the drain just like everybody else who ever tried. So that's kind of the attitude of, of most scientists, that this problem of consciousness, we know how science, the way that quantum mechanics was formulated at the beginning of the 20th century was in terms of a set of practical rules that work. And those rules allowed you to explain how your experiences were organized. And the way it was structured, it brought your experience into human experience into the dynamics. And that was the real, real change. Human experience was brought into dynamics. You often hear that the observer was brought into uh, physics by quantum mechanics, but it was not a passive observer. The observer, in some sense, was always there. Somehow, we were somehow aware of what was going, what was happening. The, the whole dynamics, according to classical idea, uh, ideas, was a mechanical clockwork universe that somehow uh, we were aware of. And um, quantum mechanics brought the human being into science not only as an observer, a passive observer, what was going on, but as an agent. And that is the key point. In order to make quantum mechanics work, you've got to bring the human agent into the equations of quantum mechanics, which are designed to explain human experience. You had to bring the human being into the dynamics at the outset. And, uh, and the, um, the effect of this, and maybe in a later part uh, of the questioning, I can get into more of the details, but in, in answer to this particular question here, the, the effect of bringing the human being into the dynamics of quantum mechanics was to allow attention, what you're focusing your attention on, to affect what's going on in your brain. And the other aspect of that is that the, the, the thing that determined the attention was not determined by the brain. Already beforehand you could think, well, there's just kind of a loop here. The, the, the brain determines what you're going to think and uh, it's just kind of a, a cyclic uh, um, uh, process. But the, the crucial point is that in quantum mechanics, there is nothing in quantum mechanics as we currently understand it that determines this, uh, what the intention is going to be. So it's not just machine is doing it all. There's something that's coming in that according to current ideas is not caused by the machinery. It causes the machinery to do something but it does not, it's not itself caused by the machinery. So that's a huge difference. And uh, the effect of it is to explain these OCD things that uh, Jeffrey Schwartz will tell you about, it allows you to understand really in terms of the equations of quantum mechanics. There's something maybe I'll talk about later, this a quantum Zeno effect. I mean, we're talking about real equations that you can apply and understand. So you're really understanding these things and you understand how your intent can cause your brain to behave in a certain way, and by making it behave in a certain way, as Jeffrey will emphasize, it actually changes the structure of your brain. And uh, so you're changing the way you think in the future. And uh, so maybe that's enough to say right now. The, the, the key point is that there is this gap in contemporary quantum mechanics, and this is the gap of what causes this um, intention to be what it is. And it's not caused by the brain, at least as far as we know in quantum mechanics today. So that's the point. It, 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 it opens the door for, for something outside the brain to come in in an essential way.
Well, maybe before we, before we come back to OCD, just one point. I, I guess you were referring to the fact that the brain by itself, if, if, if such a thing as the brain by itself exists, is a, is a, um, a superposition of brain patterns that uh, somehow has to collapse into one particular pattern. And in order for this to happen, you need uh, some kind of mental causation, or uh, yes, is, is that the idea? That's exactly the idea. Uh, uh, I didn't want to know how far I should go, but to say a little bit more along those lines, uh, you've probably all heard of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And uh, so what used to be a very mechanical picture of the universe in classical mechanics has become smeared out because of this uncertainty principle. The physical representation of the system or the representation of the physical aspects of the system by quantum mechanics, they have a, a wave function that represents the brain, for example. It's a smeared out thing. All these different classical probabilities or possibilities are uh, all there on an equal footing. Now, we know that, um, um, uh, for example, then, uh, if I'm about to say something, there will be a lot of different possibilities of what I might say. And then the way quantum mechanics works, there has to be this mysterious thing called the collapse of the wave function or the reduction of the wave function. And what happens is this big smear of possibilities or potentialities suddenly gets reduced to something um, understandable. And that's essentially the point. Uh, this reduction is always to something that is associated with an increase in knowledge. So before there can be an increase of knowledge, there has to be a process that occurs where, and this is the process that's not understood, but uh, that has to be, that's postulated in quantum mechanics, there has to be this decision as to what, the, what question is going to be asked, what new knowledge am I going to be able to gain? And uh, so the, um, the, this is the collapse of the wave function that you're talking about. And uh, uh, that's the point that uh, is something very new and different about quantum mechanics. And uh, it opens the door because of the fact that there is the possibility of this. Uh, I say each collapse is preceded by a human action that is supposed to define a possible increment of knowledge, a new increase in knowledge. It's, these collapses are associated with human knowledge. And before you know what the collapse can be, before there can be a collapse, there has to be a, uh, an action on the part of the person who's going to have the experience that defines what the new increment of knowledge is going to be. The wave function is a, is a mechanical mathematical thing that in itself doesn't have meaning or knowledge. And uh, the, the act of the human being is in effect to say, there, I want to know something. And this is, he wants to know something meaningful. So he want to have it to be knowledge. It somehow has to be meaningful to the person. So you're getting this injection somehow from we don't know exactly where, but in quantum mechanics, it's got to be there. There's, this question has got to be posed. And um, uh, once you say that the question is posed, once you just follow the rules of quantum mechanics, then you can understand how this thing from the outside is able to actually control your behavior. And your behavior then is going to control how your brain evolves and develops. And you're going to change your brain wiring. That's what Jeff is talking about repeatedly.